There's some idiots on YouTube, though. a plane out of Long Island, my great grandmother, 1910 or something. That's not right. 010? No, that doesn't make sense. Why did she get her pilot's a license? Flyer and the, when I was a kid, the wing of the airplane was up in the barn still. Now it's in the Smithsonian. Why did she get her pilot's license? Because um, she could. Yeah? She Just did, for fun. She and Amelia Earhart were the first members, of, charter members of the American Aeronautical Association. Pioneer. She did uh, camouflage for the military for planes. Oh. She taught them how to make because her husband was a famous artist. Oh. She taught them how to make uh, to paint the planes so they wouldn't be visible from the ground. Okay, so the her paint on the bottom Mary of the Mary Taylor brush. Hmm. You can Google her. Tell me about the engine. It's an air-cooled engine, a okay. la Porsche. It might even be built under license from Porsche, but maybe not. So how like different? Like Subarus have an air-cooled engine, and they they have to pay money to Porsche for their for licensing for that product. But how's this engine different from the engine in a Porsche? And mechanically, on the inside, it's there's slight differences, but they're cooled by air. That's why you see these fins here. Okay. And so if oil. I was to open the hood on a on a Boxer, that uh, or on a ah. If I was to open the You'd hood on a Porsche, something like this. but would it, how would it be mounted? Would it be mounted in the reverse direction? Yeah, the, 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 the fan is just facing the rear of the car. Exactly. Yeah. And like in the 911. Okay. And it has a big shroud, and it sucks air in and puts cold, cool air over the, over the, over the cylinders. So instead of the air cooling going this way, it would actually be coming the opposite direction. But the engine would be mounted horizontally, just like this. Yeah. But this would be pointing towards the rear tires because that's what's going to drive the transmission and drive the. Uh, tires. Yeah, and the, the transmission is in the, the front, in the front of the towards the front of the car. Okay. Down into the back of the engine. And the exhaust and intake is similar? Right, it, it comes right out the, it's, it's just a big pipe and it goes right out the rear, because the engine's at the rear. Okay. This doesn't have an exhaust system. But, well, and it has an exhaust system, but it's not. Where muffled. do they put the carburetor? Because I know on this engine, the carburetor is here, right? And then on the, on the, on the 911s, they're on the top. Okay, so they're a little smarter when they built the Porsches. <laughs> no, no, there's a reason for everything. It's an airplane, so. Yeah, yeah. So I know we have problems because the carburetors are on the bottom, because, uh, you know, we get carburetor icing. Ah, yes. I guess they don't have that problem in the Porsches, but they also don't go to altitude, so. And the, the one thing the Porsches have, well, they, in the early ones didn't, they have oil coolers, so the oil lines run right to the front of the Porsche, so there is some cooling from the front. Oh, And then big, big oil lines that run under the rocker panels right back to the engine. Right. Well, some some of these engines do have oil coolers. For example, my airplane does have an oil cooler. It's right up here. Yeah. I guess this. What what year is this one? Fifty three. Fifty three. Fifty three. Wow. Nineteen fifty three. 
You don't see very many 1953 cars going around, do you? Porsche was building them in 49, I think. When's the last time you saw a 1953 Porsche on the street? Uh, yesterday. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I need to meet your friends. <laughs> A 1953 Porsche is worth more than a 1953 airplane. I don't know how that could possibly be. That's incredible when you think about it. Well, it's because it's, well, it's a different history. I don't know how to explain the difference. Yeah, yeah a different market. And not everyone can fly an airplane, but anyone can drive a car. Possibly, yeah. yeah. So the market's <laughs> a little bit bigger, I think. Cool. Yeah, yeah. But there are some planes, collectible planes, that soar in value too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But it's just interesting, like if you think about it, most of the airplanes we fly, these single engine airplanes, are old airplanes, 1973s, 60s, 50s. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see a whole lot of new ones around because people just keep repairing them. Yeah. But with the cars, the opposite is, is the case. You don't see a lot of, I, I, I would guess, there's probably more 1953 airplanes out and about than there are 1953 cars. What do you think? Uh, that'd be a tough, that would be a tough one to call. All right. Sounds like a research. There are a lot of old Porsches running around the planet. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Even in Montreal. Interesting. A lot. People yeah. keep them hidden away. They don't take them out a lot. They're a lot in museums. Or yeah, because they're afraid. Their value has gotten too. Yeah. They don't want to get corrosion. They don't want to get into a collision and all that. Yeah. yeah. But that's. They should be out. Like this is out. They should be out driving them. They should. They shouldn't. They're meant to be driven. So. Which would you rather have, a 1953 Porsche or a 1953 Cessna? Uh, Porsche. Ah, oh, <laughs> terrible! Oh. Get this guy out of oh, here! Yeah. Who much is this afraid guy? Oh my! <laughs> oh no! You picked the wrong guy. You're killing me! No, you're killing me! <laughs>